Hello, hello, hello. It's Monday night, friends. It's Monday night. United we rise. You guys know that every single week there's a brand new training in this group and I personally look forward to this every single week. So I'm excited you guys are here. As you guys jump on, I am just know that I'm very excited to see you. Um, if I start reading comments, I will totally, you know the drill. Y'all know, you all know, because you guys do the same thing, right? We're, we're all alike in that, in that respect, I think. <laughs> but I'm so excited. So please do not hesitate afterwards to, if I do miss comments or questions as they come up, um, don't, don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can always reach out to me. You'll know where to find me if you don't already. Um, and those of you who don't know me, well, I am, uh, I'm pretty good at just sharing everything. So I'm kind of an open book in that respect. <laughs> um, I, I love being able to talk Sensi with other consultants. It is honestly one of my personal favorite passions when it comes to Sensi which is the community. Everybody that we have here in the Sensi community, in this group, and in other big groups, right, that we have when we go to Sensi Family Reunion, who's joining me in North Carolina. I cannot wait. Counting down the days, right? So when we're at those big events, right, that's when it all comes together. But it's these moments that we get to come together each week or once a month or all of these different times when you can catch trainings where we can really connect and bond and get to know each other. So these are the moments that I love. So I'm very happy, very happy to see you all. All right. So tonight we're going to be talking. I did um, a little bit earlier today. I was actually on my lunch break at work. Um, I shared with you guys that tonight I couldn't really decide. Was I going to talk about Instagram? Was I going to talk about Sense Club? So I was just like, you know what? We're just going to go ahead and we're going to co-mingle the two because that's honestly how I do it. So I'm going to just kind of let you guys in on some of the things that I do. Share that with you so that way you can take it and you can make it your own. That is the magic sauce. Okay, the magic sauce is you when it comes to this business, right? We are all sharing ideas and talking back and forth and collaborating together. But when you take something and really put your own spin on it, that's when it becomes like oh, the masterpiece, right? So some of you kind of know what I'm talking about. Those of you who are newer, maybe you haven't yet had that moment. I really hope this is going to inspire you to have that moment. So all right, Instagram and Sensi Club. These are honestly my two favorite things when it comes to Sensi. I will be completely honest, and those of you who follow me or know me, um, I say it a lot. Facebook is just not my thing. <laughs> it's not my thing. I'm not a huge fan of Facebook. The rules are always changing. Everything's always in a different spot. I feel like I'm constantly like chasing Facebook and to me, that is just exhausting. But I'm here on Facebook, right? Because, well, I love communities like this. And, you know, I have to have some way to connect with my team. And for the most part, the majority of them are on Facebook. So I am here. But I will tell you, the number one thing that I make sure that I check and that I'm on every day, well, most social media, but Instagram. Instagram, that's like my go-to. Um, I am a very visual person. So when I was initially trying to learn how to be the best consultant I could be and try and find really great ways to connect with my audience, I would always go to Instagram, well, and YouTube. Those were the two main places that I would kind of hang out when I was looking for inspiration. And still to this day, when I'm trying to maybe design a flyer to put in my mail outs or I want a new way to do samples or whatever it is, right? Nine times out of 10, I find myself scrolling Facebook and following some hashtags or looking up different things there, or I will pop onto YouTube and of course, check out an amazing YouTube video by one of our amazing consultants who are always sharing, or I will find myself on Pinterest because Pinterest is a whole, that's a whole nother topic, which I'm not going to, I'm not going to get into tonight, but you know, I love me some Pinterest. 
So when it comes to those things, I love being able to find things, especially on Instagram, that stand out for me. And I see a lot of people trying to do a lot with Instagram. And I, I've had consultants in the past where I've worked with them and we've kind of done like a deep dive on their Instagram. And a lot of times what I will encourage people to do when they're kind of feeling stuck or they really don't know what to do or they don't feel like they're branding themselves, right? They, they just want something different. As I always say, do like a good self audit of your own social media. So if for you that's Facebook, then do it on Facebook too, right? But on Instagram, right? So pull up your own Instagram, go to your profile and look at that profile grid, right? Scroll through a ways. If you're like me, I do a lot of posting. Uh, so I could probably scroll for quite some time. Uh, but you can scroll through your own Facebook and just kind of look to, or your Instagram and just kind of look to see like, what are the things that are catching your own eye? What are the things that stand out to you? What are the, is there certain pictures? Do you notice that you're getting more likes on certain things than you do others, right? What are the things that are happening on your Instagram? So that's one of the ways that I'm going to really encourage you guys to start with if you're feeling lost or you don't know where to begin with Instagram. Look at your own Instagram and kind of see where you're at so you have like this good starting point to know, okay, I've got a little bit of things that are going right. Maybe I want to tweak some things. Go from there. So let's go ahead and start with, well, I, I actually, I wrote down some things during that lunch hour um, today, some things that I wanted to talk about. So these are my Instagram tips. And like I said, along the way, I'm going to combine them with Sensi Club because that's how I've grown my Sensi Club. Um, so we're going to go through this. So one of the main things is knowing when to use videos versus images on Instagram. And when I say videos, that might mean like an actual video. It might mean going live. It might look like a reel, right? So all of those things are video concepts on Instagram. So one of the things I get asked a lot is how do I know what, what should I be doing? Should I be posting more videos? Should I be posting more pictures? Um, here's the thing with any kind of social media, right? The algorithm, oh, the dreaded A word, right? We all run from that and cringe. But here's the thing. Instagram, when they first started Reels and Reels came out, they were really, really pushing Reels, right? So whenever you were posting Reels and you guys who have been around for a while or have tried to get into Instagram, you've probably heard, right? You need to be posting Reels. You need to be posting videos. And while that is true, there is also a really fine line between knowing when to post a video and when to post like an image, Okay, and I'm going to break that down. So if you are doing education, education, right? How, how do we do education when it comes to Sensi in our business, right? Maybe that is uh, breaking down what a diffuser does, right? Or maybe it is simply, you know, how to put together your three-piece warmer, right? Um, maybe it is how to change the wax, something like that. Education, when you're trying to teach somebody how to do something, usually you're going to want to try and push more towards an actual image, right? So an image with words, more specifically. So maybe it is a picture of a warmer with a couple cubes of wax. And then on the image, maybe you overlay some text that says, you know, it's so simple for me to change up the scent in my entire house with three little cubes right? And that's just over the picture. That's a really good educational way, right? To get something across. When you are looking for marketing, so when you're trying to sell something, when you're trying to maybe put more of your personality in there, when you are, um, a new product comes out, like where, where is it? Where is it? Where's my new Tinkerbell? Have you all gotten this yet? Tinkerbell, sweet and sassy. This thing's amazing, right? So, those are the kinds of things, like if I wanted to do a post on that, I would go straight in for a video because I want people to get excited. And the best way for them to get excited is to not only see me, but to hear me, 
right? You guys are probably the same. When you get on there and you're talking about something you love, you get excited. Maybe you do like me with your voice, right? <laughs> all, the, all the fun things that make you you, right? That's what your customers want. That's what your audience is looking for, is that connection. And they're going to find that connection through video. So that's a really great way to kind of determine, do I want to post an image? Do I want to do a video? What are, what are you really looking for, right? So um, another thing is using images and sound, okay? Maybe you want to do that educational piece, right? You really want to show somebody how to use a cut and clean up, um, maybe watching it soak up real quick. Maybe you sped up your video, soak it up. You add in the new cubes of wax, right? It's wonderful. All right, so maybe you want to do that in pictures. You can do carousel pictures, right? So that's a carousel on Instagram is when you're posting more than one picture, okay? So then that way they can just slide through. A great way to be able to kind of stitch all that together is to either do that and then if you're going to do it in more of an educational way, maybe putting words as an overlay on top of those pictures so your audience is scrolling through to see what the next step is. Or maybe it's going to look like doing pictures that actually making the pictures as a reel. Did you know that you could do that? You can just literally hit the reels button and then upload pictures and it will sync them. Okay. You can choose to have the pictures stay on longer, stay on shorter, right? You can edit all of that out, but doing that and then adding a voiceover, right? With just some music, very low. If you're going to do a voiceover, just turn the music volume really low so you can just slightly hear it. You don't want the music to overwhelm your voice, right? And then get on there and then talk through the video. Again, it's going to help your audience hear the cadence and the tone in your voice, right? Are you excited? Are you being informative? Are, you know, what are you trying to convey to your audience? So that's another really great way to kind of use pictures, but give it in an informational way, right? You're giving value to the people who are looking and following you on Instagram. Another thing, especially if you're going to do video, whether it's on Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, YouTube, whatever, it's probably all the same. You need a hook, right? So specifically on Instagram, and you guys are probably the same, when you're looking at Instagram, sometimes it's really easy to just keep on scrolling, right? You just keep on scrolling. You want somebody to stop their scroll, right? And sometimes you've even seen, or maybe you've done it too, where you've actually put those words in the caption, right? Slow your scroll, okay? That's what you're really trying to do, right? You're really trying to get them to slow and stop and watch to see what you're doing. You need a hook. And a hook can be a couple of different things, right? Depending on if you're being educational, if you're doing marketing, right? If you're just having some fun with your customers. So have that hook there. One of a, a really great strategy when you're looking for a hook when you're doing a video is, wouldn't you like to know, fill in the blank. I did a reel earlier this evening um, after I get home from work uh, every single day, the first thing I do is I get home, I come, I, I change out of my, my, well, I say junk clothes because I wear scrubs during the day. So I honestly am just like, I'm a scrub, right? I'm like wearing my yoga pants and whatever t-shirt I find. Um, and so I'll change. I come in here to my office and I do a solid hour of work before I even start dinner or do anything with the house, right? So I came in today and I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I need to bag up my samples that I made yesterday. I made samples of the May scent of the month. Oh, amazing, by the way, amazing. Um, so I was like, okay, I gotta bag these things up. And as I started to bag like the first two up, I was like, wait a minute, why am I not doing a, I need to do a reel about this. So I did a really quick reel. I just set up my camera so it was overlooking my desk here. And it was literally just me putting the samples into bags and putting them putting a sticker on them, attaching them to the flyer. That was it, okay? That was it. I will tell you, um, it's very powerful to do those kinds of things, right? And so part of my hook was, have you ever wondered how samples are made, right? So that's a hook, right? You wanna catch somebody. You want them to slow the scroll. So look for ways that you can do that. So asking a question that somebody's probably asked 
is a really good way to look for a hook. Hashtags. Yes, hashtags. <sighs> okay, we all know. I hope we all know. Hashtags are important, okay? So if you're reading things that say, you know, oh, you don't have to worry about hashtags anymore. Trust me, yes, you do. Okay, yes, you do. Hashtags help the algorithm. It helps people find you. People are also following hashtags. I don't, I don't know if you guys do, but I personally do. I follow the hashtag, one of my favorite ones, because... I do have an issue with Amazon. I mean, we have a really good relationship. Um, but so much that like I even follow the hashtag Amazon Home Finds on Instagram, right? Because I'm always like looking for like the coolest new thing that I can find on Instagram. Um, people will follow hashtags. So maybe you want to, your audience are moms with kids or working from home, right? So those would be some hashtags that you would look for, right? Those are the ways that you're going to use hashtags. It's going to make you findable to get more eyes on you. All right. So, and I'm going to only touch on it real quick, but there are so many different opinions on how many hashtags to use. Let me just say this. I honestly don't think that there is a right or a wrong number. Okay? <laughs> if you are being intentional with your hashtags, and really using those hashtags to be intentional, like I said, like hashtag Amazon home finds or Amazon kitchen favorites or something like that, right? That's very, that's very intentional. That's like really narrowing it down. One of my favorite ways to utilize hashtags is to hashtag the city I live in, right? The city I live in. I live in Lee Summit, Missouri. So a lot of my, my hashtags will include hashtag Lee Summit or hashtag Lee Summit Mo because I want people who are looking in this area, right? I'm wanting to meet other people who live where I live, right? I want to grab them and have them be a part of my audience. So if you're using them effectively, it doesn't matter if you use three or if you use 30, it's gonna have the same effect. Just be intentional with it, okay? Consistency. I mean, I don't even know if I need to talk about consistency. You guys already know this because you're here on a Monday night on this amazing group, right? So you already know about consistency. But let's just say if you're really looking to put a number on it, if you want to be consistent in posting on Instagram, I'm going to say you should be posting at least four times a week. At least four times a week. And the reason behind that is because the algorithm, in order to push your content out, utilizing the hashtags, right? And all of those things to push it out. The algorithm has to learn what content you're putting out. And so in order for it to learn what you're putting out, so it knows who to put your content in front of, it needs to have more data, right? So if you're just posting once a week or maybe a couple times a month, that algorithm has absolutely no idea what your Instagram is trying to get across. It has no idea. Are you talking about scented candles? Are you talking about being a mom? Are you talking about having a kid in sports? Right? It has no idea. It doesn't know. So you have to be consistent. That's going to help you reach more people. Another piece of all of this is, of course, having a system when it comes to Instagram and posting systems. We talk about it a lot, but here's the thing. Systems, that's just a really, really big word for habits. That's what, that's what a system is. It's habits. It's habits stacked together. Those are the things that you do when this happens or when I do this, this is how I do it, right? That's a system. So have a system for your Instagram. I like to on Sundays, it's my big reset day. So when I'm sitting there with my planner, planning out my week, I do like a brain dump and I will kind of just think about different things that I want to post about during the week. Maybe it's been a while since like today, right? It's been a while since I've done a reel showing samples or how I'm bagging up an, an order or doing happy mail. And so today was the perfect example. I'm going to go ahead and just do one, right? It's been a minute. That was part of my brain dump. I need, I know I need to do that. I might as well record it. I'm just sharing what I'm already doing. Okay. So find ideas, think of different things that you can be doing and posting about, and then use those to then come up with the content that you're going to use. Because I'm not going to lie. I, if I were to just sit here all day and be like, hmm, I don't know what to post. Well, what am I doing? 
what am I doing today, right? Am I, am I doing samples? Am I doing follow-ups? Am I changing the wax out in my house? Am I going to, or am I changing the filter in my air purifier? Those are great options to be able to either take a picture, teach or educate your audience about what you're doing or share your product and your passion and the things that you love about it, right? All right, so you've got to have a system. Here's the other thing, and maybe you guys didn't know this. I do because I love my Instagram. When you are on Instagram and you are getting ready to post, I'll give you a hack here. If you scroll all the way to the bottom after you've put your little caption in, you've, you've got your, your photo or your reel or whatever it is, you've got your caption, you've tagged, you've done all your things. If you scroll to the bottom, it will say advanced settings. If you click on advanced settings before you click the word share, right, or to post it, click advanced settings, and it's going to open up a new little window, and I believe it's the top thing, maybe the second thing, but I think it's the top thing, and it will say schedule post. Shut the front door. Did y'all know that? Okay, you don't need a fancy program. If you've got one, that's great. Use it. Go right ahead. I'm not going to tell you not to. If it's working for you, do it. That's what I say, but Instagram will allow you to schedule a post. Did you know that? For free. You don't have to pay extra to do that. It just does it for you. So try doing that. You can actually schedule posts. You can do the same thing with reels where you can share, save them as a draft and then you can post them later. It kind of depends on how you want to do it, but really just figure out what's going to work for you. So that's a really great thing. All right. Know when to post for your audience. This is a tricky one. All right, that's why it's a little farther down in my list here today. Because this took me a little bit to really figure out when was the best time for me to post on Instagram, right? That's, that's always the, the question. When's the best time? Here's the thing. The best time for me to post is going to look completely different from the best time for you to post. And the reason is, is because I have an audience or the algorithm already knows the content that I'm pushing out, right? So it knows who's going to be seeing my posts. And what it does is it takes that and it tells me when is the most likely time that my audience sees my stuff. Maybe it's on the weekends. Maybe it's during the week. Maybe it's first thing in the morning. Who knows, right? Here's how you know. If you go to your Instagram, go to your profile, click on settings. When you go to settings, you can scroll down to insights. And when you go on insights, you can actually go into your followers. And what Instagram does is it will actually show you like in a, in a chart, right? It's very visual. You guys know I love the visual stuff, right? All right. So it's very visual. It will give you a chart and it will say, you know, post on this day, do the best posts between um, 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. seem to be seen more, right? And it literally will give you that timeline. That's how you know when your audience is more likely to engage and see and like or share or whatever with your content. And that's what you want to know. So I can't give you a blanket statement to say, yeah, on Saturdays in the evening, that's the best time to post. You're going to have to go into your Instagram and look. And again, you're going to find more detailed information when you become more consistent and you're doing the hashtags and you're doing all these things that we've already talked about, right? Because the algorithm's going to get to know you. And again, it's going to be able to identify your audience. And that's how you get to that point. So if you're just starting out, feel free to, by all means, go through, look at it, see where you're at. That'll give you a really great starting point. And then you can say, okay, I'm going to start doing posts. I'm going to be more consistent. I'm going to use hashtags that are relevant for the audience I'm looking for. I'm going to use some images. I'm going to do some videos in there, right? You can do all these things. And then after probably about a month, I would say, of doing that consistently, you're going to be able to go into that insight category on your Instagram and you're going to be able to see more specific times or you may notice that it's changed. Maybe it used to be on the weekends. Now it's during the week. That's because the algorithm has figured out who your audience is and who's looking at the things you're posting. And it's telling you, 
here's your opportunity. So once you find out what that window is, then your goal or what you want to aim for is to post about 30, 30 minutes to maybe an hour before that ideal posting time. Okay, because that's going to give your post or your reel or your video or whatever enough time to get out there and then for your audience to pick it up. So that's going to be really your optimal time. Here's a new thing with Instagram. Gosh, I love my Instagram. Okay, Instagram has started and I'm not 100% sure if it's on all types of accounts, but I personally, I have a creator account on Instagram. Um, but to be bluntly honest, I really don't think it matters what type of account you have at the end of the day. But what Instagram has now is what is called a broadcast channel. And you may have already seen this, maybe you haven't, okay? But what it is, is again, this is gonna be found in your settings. But what it really is, what a broadcast channel is, is almost think of it kind of like an email list, right? Do you have an email list of, of you know, things or people that you email out, new things that are coming out, right? All of, all of that stuff, right? Think of your broadcast channel as like your means to send out information to those people who follow you because that's what the broadcast channel does, is it just sends it to the people who are following you. So if you're looking to build relationships on Instagram, on social media, right? Which I hope that you are, because relationship building is kind of what we do, right? Um, you want to be able to do that, and one of the ways that you can do that is to create a broadcast channel, right? So when that you get that Tinkerbell sassy and sweet and sassy in, right? And you want to do a broadcast with that and share it or do a quick sniff review with them. That will be an excellent way to kind of send it out to just your followers, right? It's like extra content just for those people who are following you. So it's really cool. It's still in its beginning stages, okay? So I wouldn't say that it's like a great strategy, but again, if you're using the tools that Instagram gives you, then they're automatically going to start pushing it out for you. All right. Cause that's what Instagram wants. They want you to use the tools they're creating. And so when you are, they push that content right out. Same thing when, when reels came out to begin with, right? Everybody was saying, oh, if you post reels, if you post one reel a day, you're going to gain all these followers. That's because it was pushing that content out. Same thing with the broadcast channel that's starting, okay? So I will say that it's something that I haven't yet really dove head first into, but I've kind of dipped my toe in the water. So it's kind of something that is still in my little wheelhouse, but I am literally just playing with that feature of Instagram. So it's something to really consider and something to look look for to be able to give good content. Um, next. Let's talk about this for a hot second. Invest in you. I will tell you, when I made my very first Instagram post years ago, I will tell you, it probably was not the best quality of picture. It probably had a horrible Instagram filter on it, to be honest. <laughs> Um, I, I'm almost scared to go back and look at like those early posts of my Instagram profile, but <laughs> the point that I'm trying to make here is that when I started doing Instagram, I was not a pro at Instagram. I'm still not a pro. I, I never want to be the person who knows it all. I'm always learning and we always have to evolve when it comes to social media. We just do. That's how the world works, but you need to invest in yourself. If you want to get better, if you really want to focus in on Instagram or maybe it's Facebook or whatever it is, right? Then you need to really invest in yourself. You need to put some time and energy behind that. Same thing with our business, right? I can sit here all day and wish that every single one of you are earning annual sales this year. But just because I'm wishing it for you isn't making it happen, right? So in order for you to invest in yourself when it comes to, if you want to get better on Instagram, if you want to get better on YouTube or Facebook or whatever, you need to invest some time into that. 
So if it's pictures, invest some time into, and here's, here's the other thing, right? I use my phone. I don't know about you guys. I don't have a big fancy camera. I use the fancy camera that's on my fancy phone, right? And it takes really great pictures, especially with just natural lighting, okay? Okay, so really get to know your phone. If you wanna learn something, YouTube it at the end. Google it, use the Google machine, right? You can figure out how to take better pictures. So invest some time into that personal development in yourself. You wanna get better? on using reels, you wanna learn more about how to get reels or how to do them the right way and how do they make that, how do they edit it like that and how did they get this to happen? Then you have to take the time to invest in watching some training tutorials. Now, there are some of us here in the Sensei community that are, are sharing those things and I will tell you that as soon as I learn something, I either start using it right away or sometimes I never end up using it again. Uh, but it just really depends on what's working for me. But you can find out how to get better at Reels. Again, use the YouTube machine, use the Google machine. You can get on there and you can find really great people that are even outside of Sensi community who are like influencers and attraction marketing, whatever, gurus. There's a handful that I personally follow that have nothing to do with Sensi, but I know that I need to get better. I want to get better at how I do my reels, how I'm putting out my content, the pictures that I'm doing, right? All of those things. So you have to invest in yourself. Same thing when it comes to like going live, right? You're going to have to spend some time to figure out how to do that. You want to go on, you want to teach your team how to do something and use Zoom and screen share. You gotta figure out how to do it first, right? Okay, so you get my point. Invest in yourself. If it's something you wanna get better at, then you have to be intentional about the time to spend learning how to do it. Plain and simple, plain and simple. Um, so practice, practice, practice. Another thing too is you're, if you're looking for inspiration, you're like, I just want my Instagram to look better, be more visually appealing. Look at what others are doing that you find amazing or that attracts you or makes you slow your scroll. What does it for you? Because nine times out of 10, if it's working for you, it's probably going to work for the people who are following you, your future customers, your future team members, right? All of that. So really look to see, okay, how are they doing it? I really love how they do their content. Oh my gosh, it looks fabulous. It looks so professional. All right, now I need to know how they're doing that. So I, I wanna learn how to do that. So follow the people who inspire you. Now, we're always gonna tell you, not just myself, but others as well, are gonna tell you don't copy anybody else, right? Because nobody is gonna be a better you than you, right? You are you, I am me, okay? So it's good to be different because we want to stand out and you want your personal personality to come out, whether it's even in a picture, whether it's in a reel, whether it's in a video, whether it's in a live, all of those things. Because like I tell my team all the time, people buy from people. They don't buy from businesses, right? They're buying from people that they're building relationships with. And so that's what you're trying to connect with. So find what is inspiring to you and put you in it. Add you to that little magic sauce and poof, you're gonna have the greatest thing ever. <sighs> Another thing, I'm gonna do two more things. I'm gonna jump over to club real quick. So um, when it comes to Instagram, keywords. It's kind of like hashtags, but they're not hashtags. All right, so in your bio, again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna push you guys back to look at your, your Instagram profile. Are you, are you getting my drift here? I'm making you guys go and look at your own profile, okay? You're gonna do that for a lot of the things we've, I've talked about already, but I want you to look at your Instagram profile. Look at your bio. What does your bio say? If you were somebody who didn't know you, would you know what your Instagram is about? The things you're sharing? what you do. Okay. Here's the thing. Another thing I'm going to say. <laughs> um, I know it really seems like we have to put independent Sensi consultant or Sensi lead consultant or whatever, right? On everything that we do, right? All the things. Here's the thing in your bio that I'm really going to push you out of that comfort zone. Okay. Out of the comfort zone. 
instead of leading with that, I want you to really think of who is your target audience. Okay, kind of like we did with hashtags. Is it parents? Is it moms with younger kids? Is it, you know, uh, grandmas, grandpas, living, living large, going on vacations, all the things, right? The things that you love in life. Okay, those are things that you need to put in your bio. If you're just putting, I'm a Sensi Consultant. Well, that's great. But there's a whole lot of Sensi Consultants out there, right? Why are they following you? Why do they want to follow your Instagram? Are you going to show them how you're a parent and you're a Sensi Consultant and how you mesh those two together? Are you someone who maybe like me, right? I love, you guys, I told you at the beginning, right? One of my biggest passions is helping other consultants. So in my personal bio, that's what I talk about because that's really, I mean, aside and customers know me from, from knowing me, but you know, I'm talking about how to be better, right? So look at your bio, using words in your bio to help capture the audience that you want is going to help you be seen by more people. And it's going to be the same thing when it comes into actually writing the copy or the caption for your posts. So yes, hashtags are important. You want to put those on the posts, right? Or on the reels, but also really think about your captions. Think about those keywords of the audience that you're looking to capture. Is it moms? Is it dads? Is it parents? You know, all the things, right? Dog lover, cat lover, all the things. Put those words into your captions. Put those words into your bio. It's going to help push you out. So when people are doing searches for um, uh, moms with dogs or mo you know, whatever, I don't know, I'm just kind of spitballing here, but whatever, right? So that's what you're looking for is who you're going to capture. Who is your target audience? Be social. I know it sounds silly, but here's the thing. Even I forget it at times because I get so busy right between work and my business and family and a grandbaby that I just got to squeeze, right? All the things. Okay. It's really easy to post stuff and then like walk away. We have to go back and you need to be social on your social media. So responding back to comments, when somebody is sending you a, a DM on Instagram or a PM on, on Facebook, what, whatever, right? Respond because not only is it going to help the other person who's either reaching out for a question or wants to contact you or is interested in buying that amazing new scent that you showed off, right? You're building relationships, but it's also helping the social media understand that you're being social, okay? That's the thing with Facebook, with Instagram, with TikTok, all the things, right? They want to see you resharing, reposting, responding. They want to see you being social. And so when they are, they look at your account as a very active account. Again, it's going to help push it out to more people. It's going to get more eyeballs on what you are doing. And at the end of the day, in our business, what we are here for, that's what we want, right? If we could have the whole world see what Cincy scent we are warming today in our house, we would, but we can only get so close, right? <laughs> so those are the things that we're going to do to get closer to that goal. Having more people seeing what we're doing, having more people getting interested in understanding why we are a fabulous community, why they would want to join Cincy, why they want to be a part of what we're a part of. All right. So if you're anything like me, those, those are really your target audience people. All right. So Sensi Club, here's the thing with the club. All right. The club, I cannot talk about Sensi Club. Oh, I probably could talk about it more, but I feel like I talk about it all the time. And that's a good thing. Are you talking about Sensi Club? <laughs> Again, time for a little bit of a self audit even outside of Instagram, but you know, I'm going to talk about Instagram because that's what I'm talking about tonight, but insert your platform of choice. Even if it's Facebook, I still want to be your friend. Okay. Um, <laughs> you want to really take a self audit, take a look at your personal profile. What are you putting out about Sensi Club? 
How many times are you really talking about it? Because here's the thing, even myself, I do videos on YouTube, I do Instagram, I do the Facebook thing, I do lives, I, I kind of spread myself all over the place, right, when it comes to social media, because that's how I've built my business and it works for me and, and I just like I tell everybody else, right, do what works for you. Okay, so what this is what's worked for me. And so because of that, I really had to sit back and I thought probably about a year ago, I was like, oh, of course I'm talking about Scentsy Club. I even, I put a flyer and everything. Yeah, I, I talk about Scentsy Club a lot. But when I did some self audits, and I do this at the end of every month, I do a self audit. And when I was really looking, I was like, hmm, as much as I feel like I'm talking about it a lot, I, I really see that I'm not talking about it as much as I thought I was, right? <laughs> I'm mentioning it here and there, but I really wasn't talking about it as often as I thought. So I started really putting a conscious effort. I put intention behind it. Part of my monthly goals has been to dive more into Sensi Club every single month and really put the focus on that. Now, I can tell you that from January of 2023 to now, I have doubled my club subscribers. Actually, not even my subscribers. Let me rephrase that my subscriptions that are running. There's a difference. There's a difference, right? Okay, here, here's an example, okay? I have 17, and I'm not, I'm not a Lisa Roberry. I'm not, I mean, these, these people are amazing and killing it at Sensi Club. I'm gonna get there though. I'm just not there yet, right? But here's my, here's my numbers for you. And to me, it's really big, okay? Because for me, that's a really big step, okay? I have 17 subscribers with 33 subscriptions. What? What does that mean? Okay, here's what that means. That means that my subscribers have multiple clubs. Shut the front door. What did she just say? That's right. Here's the thing. My customer base is made up, I should probably at some point actually do these numbers, but I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roughly shoot and I'm going to say, I'm going to say 60% of my customer base is repeat customers. The other 40% are brand new customers, PWS random orders that come in. We all love those, right? Did a little happy dance when that happened. Okay, all the things, right? So that's that's a portion, but it's a, it's a smaller portion. The big part of my business, of my PRV, is repeat customers. So by knowing that, by knowing that I have more repeat customers than I do new customers, how can I appeal to my repeat customers? I can appeal to them by sharing with them the best way for them to get their Sensi. And the best way for anybody, including a consultant too, right? Because a girl would love to have a discount, is to have a Sensi club. Because at that $30 price point, what happens? They save 10%. At that $60 price point, what happens? Not only do they save 10%, they also get a half price item. Okay, there's rewards right then and there. They're also earning rewards points for every dollar they spend. Do they have an affiliate link? Yes, they do. They get that for free as being a club member, right? And when they share that and one of their friends signs up using their affiliate link, they're earning two points for every $1 that their friend spends. What do they do with those points? Well, they can use them towards future club purchases. They can log in on your PWS, they can use it towards a, an actual Sensi, just an order in general. Um, I think there's pieces of that. Now, I don't know because I'm not a customer. I don't get the reward uh, points or the referral points. Uh, but I do know that, you know, they have to be able to use those, right? And they do expire. So what am I doing with my customers? You can probably already guess where I'm going with this, right? I'm telling my repeat customers, this is how you can save money. Yes, it's great to do a party. Yes, they all know that, right? They're repeat customers. They've heard that from me for as long as they've been a customer of mine. But 
Do they want to get an extra bonus? Sure they do. So these people who are subscribers, they are getting multiple subscriptions because for one, they're also listening to how I utilize Sensi Club. Okay, I have a monthly, a bi-monthly, and a quarterly club, okay? It's not even crazy and out of the water. My quarterly club, which just ran this month, um, so every three months, I get a pack of cotton cleanups and I get a replacement air purifier or filter for my air purifier. That's, those are the only two things in my every three or my quarterly club. That's it. Now, I'm sharing that with my customers every single time somebody orders an air purifier, you can guarantee that I'm having that conversation with them. You need to set up a club now that's gonna run every three months and go ahead and just add your replacement filter in there because approximately 90 every 90 days, that light's gonna come on in your purifier, it's gonna be time to change it. So set it and forget it, my friends. That way you will always be getting a new filter. You don't have to remember, oh my gosh, did I order one? I don't know, maybe I should check with Jackie. No, they can just set it and forget it. So they've done that. The same thing with their wax usage, okay? These are repeat customers, remember? Okay, so I know that they normally are running through a six pack of wax about every two to three months. So what am I telling those customers? You know what you need to do, right? I am sharing with them the bonuses and utilizing what Sensi has already given me. That's what I'm doing. I am utilizing the tools that Sensi's already done. There's nothing out of compliance about that. There is nothing I can't share publicly about that, right? I can shout that from the rooftops anytime I want to because every single one of us can do the same thing. And every single one of us, we all should be doing the same thing. You guys, it wasn't until just this past six months that I really leaned into that concept and was like, okay, these are the people that are buying from me. These are the people who need the Scentsy Club the most. Because yeah, they'll set up a party link and yeah, that's great. But then they wait until it gets to a certain dollar amount and then they close it out. Why? When they can go to Scentsy Club and they can automatically get a discount it's actually cheaper shipping, so it's a flat rate, my friends. Okay, those are the perks you wanna be talking about with your customers. So be approaching your customers with all of the perks. Now, are you telling them about all those perks all the time? I don't know if you are or not, but if you are, like the Lisa Roberries of the world, right? I'm sure they are. I hope they are, I'm, I know they are, right? They're, they're amazing, fantastic, smart people and that's how they're able to get to those numbers those numbers are great and they're amazing and i hope that i will get to those numbers i'm not even gonna say hope i i will get to those numbers it's i i go my own timeline right this is my journey okay i'm going on my journey here so here's the thing i increased club subscriptions i increased just by going to my current so after i initially got my subscribers that's when I went to my subscribers and said okay and started really working with just my subscribers who already had clubs saying you should think about having a bi-monthly also or having a quarterly also along with your monthly one right that's how I was able to double that number so I was able to do that last month in March um, I pulled this up during my lunch hour. So last month, I had 520 PRV in Sensi Club. That made me happy. That made me happy. This month, and if you guys know me at all, you know, I will tell you all the time, there is no competition in this business. The only competition you have is you and yourself, okay? You against you every single month, right? I am constantly, every single month, trying to beat my own PRV and my own sponsoring from the previous month. That's, that's what I do. That's why I set up my personal goals. Because I'm not trying to compare myself to anybody, not my sponsor, not that amazing SSD, not her, not him, not nobody. Me. That's what it's about, right? So, this month in April, and I still have two more clubs that are going to run. But so far in April, I have 556 PRV, just from Sensi Club. So I've already beat last month. Yes. 
I can't wait to put that down on my self audit. I'm so excited. I'm so excited at the end of the month to be able to fill that number in and be like, yes. Because when I set a goal and my goal is to beat myself in the previous month, when I set a goal, that's when I throw my own confetti in the air, right? I throw my own dance party because I have done it. I've done something that I really wanted to do. And that was to beat my numbers from the previous month. Okay. So working with Sensi Club is going to help you to be more intentional. So when and while we are talking about, okay, doing that self audit, really looking at how often are you sharing Sensi Club and then looking at the people who already subscribe, even if you only have one Sensi Clubber, that's fine. Start with the one. It all starts with one, right? Did you all start building a team? When you had your first team member, yes, you did. It starts with one. That is the power of one, right? Because if we do it for one, we can do it for more. So start with your one Scentsy Clubber, even if that's all you have, and you focus on that Scentsy Clubber. And I want you to really look at what they're ordering through their Scentsy Club. How often are they getting it? And are they also purchasing outside of that club? And that's what I did with my club subscribers, right? So I pulled out my club subscribers and I looked to see, for one, what are they ordering? My customers are wax and warmers people. Um, I have a handful that are oils, but more wax and warmers than anything. Um, and I love that about my customers because that's like my big passion too. So I love that. But I really looked at what they were ordering, how often they were ordering, and then if they were ordering outside of the club. So then I pulled them up in my order history, right? How often are they ordering? And I noticed a pattern and that's when I really connected the dots, right? And I said, okay, yeah, they have this Scentsy Club and I could see they've got some Bring Back My Bars in there. Yeah, they've got some Bring Back My Bars. I had some that were getting with box every month um, and then maybe some, um, what well, was actually from last spring and summer, whatever, some, you know, scents that weren't available anymore. So they were locked in. And I was like, okay, these are my people, right? These are my target audience because I know that they love Scentsy because they have these scents and they want to make sure they're getting these scents. So they are continuing to put them in club. So they lock them in. So how can I help them to understand how they can save more? And how can they get more points? Well, maybe they should start another club, right? Again, it's going to save them on shipping. So if they are already ordering outside of the club, well, what are they ordering and how often are they, are they getting it? So those are the couple different factors that you want to look at. It really all between Instagram and Scentsy Club. Being intentional with your marketing, with who your target audience is, and how you're spending your time, that is really like the, that is the target, okay? That's the target that you want to find. And when you find that target, then you just keep, building that target, right? You keep building from that. Because again, if it's working for you, then you lean into it. You find what is working and you lean into it. I know that this is a lot. So <laughs> I know it's a lot in a, in a short amount of time. Feel free to rewatch this, hit the replay, go back, share it with your teams, talk about it. I encourage you guys to talk about it, okay? If you have those accountability partners, those collaboration partners that you're with or you have chats and different things, right? Talk about these things with them and make yourself sit down and really set up like a plan for what you wanna do. Do you want to build your Sensi Club? Okay, well, here's some really great ways that you can do that. And that's when, again, you're gonna have to put a little bit of work, right? Because success doesn't happen overnight. PRV and, and promotions, those don't happen just by happen chance. They happen because people put intention and work behind everything they're doing. Those are the people who are meeting their goals. And you guys have just as much ability to do that as anybody else. Just because those people are doing it doesn't mean that they are some 
golden thing and and that's like a one-off that'll never happen i'll never get to that goal i'll never have a big sensi club base i started out the year with sensi club you guys with getting like 200 every month okay so just from january until what what is it it's it's april right we're almost at the end of april my goodness okay i've already taken 200 prv and built it up into over 550 prv if I continue on this path of being intentional, being consistent, really drilling down into who is my audience, who are my customers, how can I give them the best deal, then I'm gonna continue to have that club grow. My personal goal for myself is to have 1,000 PRV and club orders every single month by the end of the year. So. We're not even halfway through the year. I'm om I'm halfway, a little over halfway. Let's be optimistic. I'm a little over halfway to getting there. I know I can do it. Why? Because I believe in me. And I know I want this business to work for me because I know what this business does for me personally, right? It pours into my own cup because I personally love Sensi. I love working the business. I have been doing this for almost 12, in January, it will be 12 years I have been doing this. And I will tell you, I am way more excited and way more intentional about my business now than I ever was when I clicked that join button. Because now I know the potential. Now I know what it offers me. I go to my, my job during the day. I work in, in an operating room at a hospital and it gets crazy and hectic and all the things and I like it for 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 being it, right? I have my own reasons for liking that job. But let me tell you, every single day, as soon as I get home, I know I get my one hour office time. And every day I will sit down when I'm eating my lunch, whether it's in the cafeteria or <laughs> sometimes it's sitting outside, whatever, right? I will, I take my iPad with me, I take my notebook with me and I'm writing down, here's what I'm gonna do when I get home if I don't already have a plan for what I'm doing when I get home that night. Here's what I'm going to work on for that one hour. And I get excited about it. So when I get home, I'm excited to do it. And I already know what I'm doing. I'm going to do these two things. I get those done, kick them off the to-do list. Boom. Then I'm going to go cook dinner and then whatever, right? Set yourself up for success. Pour into you. Because you are capable of anything you set your mind to. It's not going to happen overnight. You're going to have to put the work in. You're going to have to be intentional. You're going to have to invest in you. But let me tell you, you are the biggest investment that is going to mean the most. Whether it's with Sensi, whether it's whatever other passions you have in life, right? Just like with our kids who are in baseball or softball or soccer or whatever, right? You're pushing them because they're passionate. They just love the sport. Okay, I love the sport of Sensi. Can I just say that? I love Sensi. So I'm going to pour in as much of my passion and my intention and my time that I can to make this the best thing because it's given so much to me. I, I was not a person who was confident. I didn't have a whole lot of self-confidence. There are still days where, yes, I have to pull myself up out of the out of the dirt, right? Sensi has given me a lot of that. Sensi community has given me some of my closest friends. That says a lot. It says a lot. I have a community. I have people to lean on. I have people that I can depend on. That I laugh with, that I collab with, that we work really hard together with, right? All the things. We go through all of the things. And we have such strong bonds. And getting to meet so many others that have the same like-minded. You're in this group, right? You're in this group. You're watching this training right now. Why? Because you believe in yourself and you love Sensi. So put both feet in the water and let's do it. And remember, there is no competition. It is you against you. So stop comparing. If you're still playing the comparison game, stop playing the game, my friends. Stop playing the game because let me tell you, you're never going to win. They are them. You are you. Okay? You are the magic for yourself. 
You can't be anybody else. You can only be you. So continue being you, continue showing up, be intentional, be consistent, and know that if anything else, you got a cheerleader in me anytime that you need it. Have a great rest of your evening. Have a great rest of the week. I will come on and I will go through all of these comments because like I said at the beginning, I knew I couldn't read the comments and do all of this because I wouldn't have gotten it done. So <laughs> I'll come back. You guys can feel free to ask any questions that you have over anything that I've gone over uh, tonight or anything that you want to know about. I'm more than happy. You guys know I'm an open book. I'm here for you. And uh, I'll be in the group all week long talking and sharing more. So Talk to you all soon. I will see you later. And thank you for watching.